this second video of the three will actually be continuing on from the first one. So we've already done the surveys, we've already looked in colour, we've done the images, the B-mode images, and this is just looking at the Doppler traces that we're going to be doing for the um, carotid. Okay, so we're starting the Doppler traces, the spectral Doppler part, with the subclavian. The reason for that, I think I just like to do it because it gets it done. You've started down here, you move all the way up, go to vertebral and you're done for the patient. It will save going back down again. So remember you're following the CCA down. Need to drop that depth. Now everyone's different. You can see, optimise your image. You can see on this person, here's the subclavian coming off here. Now you're not going to be able to get a 60 degree angle there. This is the area that is of highest importance though. So put the gain down a little bit. Again, you don't want it black. Now it's going to depend which way you can angle. You can have a play around and see every patient's different unfortunately. For this person, that angle looks better. So I'd put the colour box there, keeping in mind, remember how I showed you before, there's no fill here, but if I straighten the box a bit, you should be able to get a little bit more fill. And if you put the colour gain up, you should get a bit more. It's not a test for that, it's just an extra thing we do for carotids. If you can get flow through, you know there's not an obstructive plaque there. So you do the best you can, don't stress over it. I know that a lot of people last year got all panicky, but really we just want to see that you can look at this area. Now that, there's no way I'm going to get a 60 degree angle through there. So this is what I'm going to use. I'm going to drop my pulse wave down here. Again, this angle here, up here, hope you can see my arrow, says 54. I don't mind what it is as long as it's as accurate as you can get and less, less than or equal to 60. So I'm going to put it about, not the arrow, about here. Needs to go a little bit flatter. That's at 60 now. So we'll update and do a trace. Optimise your image. Now this is not going to be clear. Remember you want it about over half, sort of three quarters of the screen. You want the baseline up a little bit so it's got room there. This is an acceptable image. I understand it's not clear. It just needs to show that there's flow coming through it. So I'm going to take that image. Remember you can scroll through to pick a better image if you've got one. Caliper. Now it's only the one measurement for this. It is a trace that goes below the line, so we don't need to see the end diastole. Now subclavian is top left on the screen, subclavian artery. So update again. Now we're going to do the CCA proximal. So again, optimise your image for that. You might want to put a bit of a steer on it this time. Now it looks like it's going to be a little bit of a bleeding outside with the gain, so I turned it down. Look for that. See the angle of the blue? That's actually a good way to try to work out where your angle needs to be. So I haven't taken the trace, but I'm setting up post-processing where the angle is. So it's lined up with the blue, keeping your hand perfectly still. That's the hard bit. Update from this. Lovely. So caliper again at the top. You can see this isn't too bright, it's not too dull, you can actually see the tip nicely. And then you don't want the notch, you want just back from it. So that is the proximal CCA. Update again, we're sliding up the neck now. So you're getting to the bulb area. I'm going to steer. Not in the bulb, please go just outside the bulb. On the touch screen, it's got the 2D tab. If you hit the 2D, actually that didn't even work. Sometimes the focal zone is dict what it is for this, it's dictated by where, see that? I'm not moving it on the screen, all I'm moving is the 
where the trace is coming from and you can't actually adjust the focal zone. So just be aware of that. Now, that's a little bit bright. The scale's a bit big, so I'm putting the scale down. Put the gain down a bit. See how it reduced the size of it? But that's a nice clear trace because you've got a lovely window there. So you get the highest point, the point before the notch, distal. Remember, you're angling the probe now, so you need to work out everyone's different. Some people have a, I actually do ECA first, some people's ECA comes right up and some drop down quickly. So you need to work out which way is more comfortable for your hand and which way is more comfortable for your patient. You don't want to be heel toeing right into their neck. So this ECA where you would think, oh, you need to drop that depth a bit. You can't, it's three centimetres. I'm not mucking around with the HD zoom. That just wastes time. So I'm going to get rid of my arrow, come up here, steer it a little bit more. Now, you don't want to be, there is, there can be a bit of turbulence around the bulb where it comes into the narrower vessel. But you can see how clear this is looking. I'm going to drop the scale, the colour scale a bit so that we can get some bit of aliasing. Not really much aliasing, but you can see there's, there's no real issues with turbulence in this area. I'd be happy with this. This is a good reading. I don't want you to go too far because the further you go, if there's a narrowing here, if you're twice the diameter away, it can return to normal. So I actually need you to be close to the bulb, but not if it's looking really turbulent, you don't go there. Now again, you're looking for the window, the nice sound, it's a nice clear trace. I'll pick the tallest one. Don't cheat and go over it. Okay, ECA. Now, you, if the person has plaque in their ECA, absolutely you need to do a mid and a distal and, moder and, and monitor that plaque. But if it's normal, that's the only trace you do for, I for ECA. Now, ICA, you've got to work out which way you're going. Now, the bulb is here. So this is really ICA here. I could do a trace there. If I heel toe that way, Looks like I could get slightly more that way. So I'm going to change the angle. And already you can see how much clearer that image is there. Again, you want to make sure that the angle is right. Watch that it's not over 60. Parallel with the fastest flow, not necessarily the wall, but in this case it's looking pretty close to the wall. So I turn that scale down and that's way too big now. So I'd rather you try it, waste a second doing it, and then we can look at this and say, look, I know that you tried. It might look like it's a small trace, but it's actually the right trace for this patient. So if you fall off, make sure you go back to the right vessel, not a hint. Now, Okay, now the proximal ICA needs to be taken just after the bulb. The distal ICA, if we drop the depth and remember straighten the box up a bit so you get more fill down lower. You can see on this patient, it goes all the way down here where you can see it ducking down. And if you look at that distance, that's actually quite a distance between here and here. There's no set point where the mid ICA is two centimetres past the proximal or one centimetre. Every patient's different. What you need to keep in mind is you are taking representative images of that patient. A doctor is reporting. The patient's getting reports on your images. So if you take proximal here, mid here and distal here, what about all of this? You've missed probably three centimetres or more of the CCA. As sonographers, we have a, a responsibility to actually represent our patients and, and what their anatomy is. So I would like the proximal about there. On this person, knowing that it ducks to about there, I want the mid about here. So it's well past the proximal and it's still in a good position. So I'm just going to drop that depth one. I'm going to make sure the angle is right. 
again, that's a lovely clear trace. Now remembering, I want you to have three to five traces fitting in. So if you've got a nice relaxed patient like I do, you'll probably have about three automatically without it needing to change. Oops, mid ICA. But for some people, you may need to actually change the speed that it's going at. Okay, so now we're going to go distal. And again, as distal as you can. As sonographers, your tutors know exactly when something's distal. Some people, you won't get it distally. But if you can get it there where it's starting to duck down, I'm really happy with that. If you can get it there, I'll be giving you a big smiley face if I'm, if I'm assessing you. Might have to put the scale up a bit. So that's quite high. It's not going to have the nicest wavelength. Oh, let's get rid of that and start again. You might need to adjust the scale, but I know that it will be close because it was before. Maybe a little bit more gain in that image, but that I'm actually happy with. If you took that, that would be a satisfactory image. So the next thing to do is the vertebral. Now the easiest way to do the vertebral is you don't want the depth too much. Get the CCA, so you've got the, let's take that off. You've got the bulb of the CCA here. You put your focus at the level, you can see the vertebral bodies here. So that's sort of in front of the neck with the patient's head turned. All I'm doing is angling out. That's a muscle. You're going to be looking for a vessel running between the transverse processes. Now there's two vessels here, which one's which? The only way to tell for sure is to put colour on. You'll have a patient trick you all the time. So I'm going to steer it. Now it's very important that you know which vessel is which and you know the flow direction. So I always just scan back. So you're just sort of tilting back. Carotid is flowing towards the head. Cephalically there. And then you're just angling across. And the red pulsating one, which is deep to the vessel, the vein, is actually the artery. So there's the artery, there's the vein. Keep your angle the same as when you've checked with the CCA. Then you will know whether the flow is correct or not. Now that's a nice trace. We're just going to pop the trace in here. Very fiddly. You're going to get hand cramps when you're first learning to try to get used to doing this. Please persist with it. It does come, you do get it eventually. Okay, now that trace is very small. So we're going to change the scale. You can hear the sound, it's very different. Those vertebral. Oops. Vertebral artery. Now, is it anti grade or retrograde? Well, we've already checked with the CCA, haven't you? So if you label that, that would be great. Okay, so the first part after doing the CCA, we're going to be doing the ECA. Now, you're going to have to look and see what angle it's coming off the bulb. So with the probe in a neutral position, this is almost running straight across. So I could choose if I go up, tilt it down or tilt it up. Now for my hand, it feels more comfortable with my arm resting down like this. So I'm going to change the box so that it optimises the image that I want. So there's the ECA. Now remember, optimise your image, but this is where you need to warn your patient. So if you just remember to let your patient know that you're about to touch them. Now, temporomandibular joints around there, you can feel the little gap where you'll feel the temporal artery here. So that's where you need to tap. I usually try and prepare for it before I do it. So you need to keep this hand exceedingly still. So you start your... Make sure you've got your steer right, your angle right. Not too far from the bulb, remember, you need to be, if it's a nice clean trace, you need to be as close to the bulb as you can. So you update, I actually am half leaning over already in preparation so I don't move my hand. So we're just going to start this. Make sure you've set it so it's right. Now have a test. See the little jiggle? So you could let it go. And 
and then put an press, pre, um, press freeze. Now you can see the temporal tab here and it's not in this one and it won't be an earlier one. So what I'd like you to do is use your cine loop. You cannot measure on a temporal tab. You can see there the runoff is beautiful and you can see here it's jolted. So the temporal tab, don't take your time and do it leisurely because otherwise you'll have three traces with temporal tap and you won't be able to actually image. Now I've just moved it on again because I noticed this one hasn't got a good peak on it. So there's your temporal tap. That one's nice and clear as well. So I'm going to image here, not to the dip. ECA. And then remember to label TT for your temporal tap. Okay, so that's the end of the carotid study. The next video will be me doing the entire carotid in one hit, no commentary, just doing the scan so you can actually see what we would like in the assessment. Thanks, guys.